With the World Tour season starting in a couple months, I thought, why not make a little video about these early season races? Are they actually worth doing, etc., etc.? So a couple years ago, I remember Chris Froome saying that actually, like the UAE Tour, which is the example I'm going to take today, I, I don't do it because it's a waste of time because it's just too easy and I actually lose form. And people were just like, oh, he's so arrogant, he's this, he's that, and thought that he was lying. But I want to show you today why actually some of these early season races don't make sense um, if you're a World Tour GC contender because... They are too easy. So we're going to go through Valverde's power file and Chris Froome's training. Um, obviously, Chris Froome uploads infrequently on Strava, but we can see like what he does, you know, come leading up to maybe March or so. And then we can have a look at Valverde. So Valverde uploaded his power data and trainings consistently from about 2018 onwards. So the race is going to go through uh, is going to be the 2019 UAE Tour. And we're just going to look at the TSS and how hard it is. But first, we'll just look at his like general general training so i think actually i might have the wrong year here uh but anyway what we can see here is that valverde actually doesn't do crazy amounts of hours this is sort of like his off season here so like february um he's doing 22 hours like so you know obviously if you're an amateur you're like oh 22 hours is huge but for a world tour pro it's it's nothing crazy and then he has like a little rest week and then he does the uae tour so his, this is the first week where he has 14 hours so this is a thing you've got to think like He's going to taper to do this race. He's not just training through it. So that's like a week. Not lost, but not a week that's maximal. Uh, that's maybe the best thing he could do at that time. And then the next week is obviously going to be a big, bigger week, 26 hours. Um, and we're just going to go through what the race entailed. Um, there's only one stage that doesn't have power data. And it's a bit annoying because it's actually quite a hard stage. But anyway, um, so this is the team time trial. And this is probably, I guess, what you can't replicate in training. You can't replicate a team time trial very effectively. Obviously, you can do team time trial training, but you're not going to be able to show that he did 380 normalized for 17 minutes or whatever. Um, but also just obviously the actual technical aspect of training in a team time or of racing in a team time trial is pretty um, is pretty hard to replicate. So this you think, yeah, like, you know, um, probably quite useful. In the 2019 tour, there was also a team time trial, I believe, uh, in Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. Brussels. So, yeah, makes sense to to maybe do that uh, just for Movistar. Then we have the next day, uh, which was the Monday, and here is 250 normalized for four and a half, four hours 40. And he's put his threshold as 370, probably a bit like higher, I think, maybe, but you know, something around that. Hey, all it shows is that today wasn't a very hard stage. If we look at the first like hour 43, he averaged 130 watts normalized, and this is when you're like, is this worth it? Like, he could just do that at the end. Okay, it got quite hard to the middle. I think there was like some crosswinds on the stage. I can't remember everything from so long ago. But he did 275 normalized for three hours. So you'd say on the balance of things, that is quite useful training, but maybe not the best. I guess the thing is though, that's hard to quantify is that like the normalized, you're like, yeah, you could do that training, but it's the specific accelerations that he couldn't, that he can't necessarily do. Especially if we now look in the last half an hour, like you can see it's like 48K an hour, 300 normalized for half an hour. Like towards the end, it's gonna be pretty hilly, pr pretty uh, spiky. And um, it's going to require quite a lot of power. So, you know, in this in this regard, you're like, yeah, OK, maybe he should do this race. But then we're going to come up and look as the week in the hole. So the next day again on Tuesday, pretty similar power, 247 normalized. But if you look at the average 158, which again doesn't really show the whole story. This is Jabal al um, the climb. And so basically all this was was soft pet tap into the bottom, 178 normalized for four hours and then a max effort on the climb. And you're sort of like, OK, yeah, there's a lot of spikes in here. This is the thing where he was like behind uh, with Demoulin and some others and then bridged across to Lopez and Alaphilippe and smoked them in a sprint. And you're like, OK, yeah, that is pretty like hard to do in training. But I think as we've shown this year, like in terms of Pogaccia, Roglic, Paul, all the top hitters, I think some of the best numbers ever. And they were, you know, training mainly, they were mainly doing efforts in training. So this one, you're like, okay, yeah, again, maybe useful. But at the same time, you think if all he was going to do was basically do 190 normalized for four hours, 15, and then do a max effort up a 20 and a bit minute climb, you're like, is it worth like all the hassle of doing a race and potential of crashing? I'm not so sure. Uh, then we have this stage again, which goes, I think, up to the Hatter Dam again pretty easy stage for most of it um like 240 normalized for four hours like if you're an average amateur you'd get around that pretty easy like no worries like not even four it's per kilo for the boy so really and then obviously the end bit is pretty punchy and you know again maybe that's good for flesh but i again think it's not not crazy this stage just looks like pointless um 
I don't know if it's, I was like almost always powers too low, 190 normalized for like five hours, you're just like, um, yeah, there's, there's no need for that. Like, I, I don't really get, okay, fine, the end is like a bit hard at the end, but like, the point is, is that, okay, people always talk about the racing fields, but when you look at this stage, it's just pointless. This, this next stage obviously looks, um, this again would have probably been quite an easy stage, and then the last part up to the Jebel um, Jai's full. It was pretty hard um, final, to be fair. Um, I think Reichenbach normally has power, so maybe we can have a look at his and, and see what the details is. Yeah, so 270 normalized. Obviously, he was probably doing a bit more work. Um, but I guess the point I'm trying to say, uh, which I'm saying, well, again, 240 normalized for three hours, 40, so like zone two, and whack out Jebel, ha um, Jebel Jai's at five and a half. I guess my point is like, okay, yeah, climbing in a group and climbing on your own is different, but like now we know the exact demands that you need to do to like win World Tour races and all the rest, like for a GC contender, which maybe Valverde, you're saying he isn't, he's more of a one day rider, but even so like, you know, I don't know if there's any point doing these races when you think like the fitness loss and this is like 230 normalized, just cruising around like, like literally like almost any of you watching like Okay, ignoring like bunch ability, but in terms of like power could get around the stage until the last like 10k probably. Like if you look at this middle part, he's literally doing 220 watts like in the middle of a bunch. Like, I don't know. And if we look at Chris Room's approach, like he's doing, obviously it's slightly earlier in the season, but you can see he's doing 25 hour weeks, uh, the 29 hour weeks, 28 hour weeks. And like obviously... You know, he, he's going to be thinking, oh, I did six hours motor pacing, um, did 270k. And you're like, yeah, like for him, why would he go U8 or most of the time he's just soft tapping in a bunch. And you're like, OK, yeah, you need a bit of race sensations. But you think like surely you just do Paris Nice or Tirreno later or just simulate your own race almost like it doesn't. For me, it, it seems very odd that some people choose to do UAE, but everyone does. OK, there's also World Tour points. So ignoring that, because let's say they're a big name. Then you're like, so you're basically going to just get a couple of accelerations towards the end. The race pace is hard to quantify, but I know what people mean. Like, obviously, I've, whether training and racing are different, I agree. Like, you know, but I think when you're that good, it's probably not as hard to adjust. And also, I guess the other thing is like the, the risk of a crash is quite high. Maybe Valverde, he races so much is different. But like just talking about an average GC contender, like you could crash, break your collarbone and that could set you back quite a long time. So surely you want to race almost the minimal possible. Um, and then also, I guess the big thing is just like specific efforts. Like, is there any point doing this when you could probably have better training? It's not like you're trying to win it. Like maybe Val, like again, this isn't on Valverde. It's just Valverde's power data is the best because he wins these races in UAE and he's obviously similar weight, like 60 odd kilos, which is what most GC contenders are. So I reckon it's probably the best guy to compare, but like, you know, he just loves racing. So fair enough, he's going to race. But you know, if you're someone who's like Froome or someone who's just, you know, they don't care about any race. They just want to win the tour. Is it the best preparation? Probably not. Like, I reckon they could just train harder at home, um, you know, do a couple races. And I mean, obviously before, like back in the day, people used to do the Giro before the Tour because that was just how it is. And now no one does that really. Well, they do occasionally, but it's very rare. Most people realize that, you know, minimal racing, training, you can have the same. Um, you don't have to taper before it. You can just do it. There's no stress. There's no travel. There's no there's no nothing. It's just you just keep training through it. You can probably train harder than Valverde did in this week. I mean, we could add up his TSS for the, for the week, and I reckon it, it would be high, but it wouldn't be anywhere near what he does in training if he needed to. Um, and I guess if you compare it to something like um, in April, uh, where he's going to be doing another stage race, I think this should be uh, Catalonia. Like, it's going to be completely different. Like, the, the difficulty in Catalonia is just is just so different because, obviously, the roads are, like, the roads are different. So, you actually have to really accelerate. Well, when you're racing on highways, like, is there any point? I don't know. But, anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, obviously, let you let me know yours in the comments below. Do you think that these early season races are a waste of time for most people? Um, or are they actually really important training and that people should value racing even if it's at quite a low level because i think obviously as an amateur you don't really have this decision in my opinion because there aren't many races that you can turn up to and just soft tap round and like you know what i mean like it, it's not it's not the same like because the way world tour racing is structured like okay valverde could go in the break but he's not going to get in the break so realistically his only option is unless he lost a billion minutes which he, i guess he doesn't want to because he does want to win but someone like that like a gc contender like okay yeah that you get two summit finishes which is higher 
but the rest of the time you're soft tapping around for sprint stages and it's like is that worth it no well for an amateur you think I can't really think of many races that amateurs do that would, uh, are equivalent. Like, yeah, okay, crit, if it's really flat, you could just sit in the whole time. But, like, why are you paying your money? So, like, yeah, that's... Anyway, that's my thoughts. Um, leave yours below. Uh, cheers for watching. Um, we're going to do a Zwift race tomorrow, so um, that will be coming out. And I've got a little cheeky make-your-own-energy-gel tricks coming this week as well. So, anyway, cheers for watching. See you in the next one.